Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogram.com. So I got a question about what do I think is the best PC for software developers? And as I do with many questions, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna answer it quite the with a direct answer, the, the way that that some of you would expect me to. Uh, that's that's kind of the thing that I do, right? Is that I, I kind of hit the soft skills. You know, it, we're we're not gonna talk directly about the the problem because I like to I like to zoom back and talk more about the principles rather than giving you a, a specific hardware recommendation. So maybe that will be more useful to you. I think I think it'll be more timeless in, in advice and it'll just be my experience. But before I do that, I do want to take a moment to thank the sponsor that we have, Simple Programmer, for this video at least, which is Hire.com. You can check them out by going to simpleprogrammer.com or going to Hire.com forward slash Simple Programmer. That'll, that, that'll be a better link to get there. And if you fill out an application with Hired, what will happen is that they will take your application, process it through their big machine of deciding whether or not to put you on the system and where to put you, and they will connect you with software development companies or companies that are looking for software developers with your skill set, hopefully. And those companies will contact you directly through their platform and offer you interviews. That's what's so cool about Hired.com. I like that concept. They'll also include the salary requirements or the salary for that particular job. So it saves you a huge amount of time. So this is worth it if you're looking at a job, at getting a new job. If you're just thinking about one, you might as well try this rather than blasting all those resumes out there. And if you get some success here, that's going to save you a lot of time. Plus, maybe you'll get several interviews at the same time and you can kind of negotiate amongst them. So go ahead and go to Hired.com forward slash simple programmer. If you use that link, you'll get double the hiring bonus which is $2,000 you'll get instead of $1,000. Just uh, just tell them I sent you. All right, so let me read this question here. This is from Joy, and she says, which computer with what processor would you recommend for a developer uh, something that is fast and affordable? So and she says, thank you for simpleprogrammer.com. It helps a lot. All right. So again, like I said at the beginning, I'm not going to give a very direct answer to this. Uh, you know, I, I did a review on the computer that I have that I bought recently from Origin PC. It's a it's a laptop. You can check that out here. But is that the best computer for a developer? Well, <laughs> it certainly will work really, really well. I mean, it's it's maxed out super damn fast. Like I, I would say that that would be pretty close to top of the line as far as a laptop goes. I mean, it's it's pretty damn maxed out. So, if you've got five grand to spend on a dev PC or laptop, and you're willing to take the hit of how big that sucker is, yeah, I would totally recommend. I love it. It's awesome. It, there's nothing I could throw at that thing that that thing is not going to handle. It's crazy. 64 gig of RAM and you know an i7 processor and you know a 1080 uh, GT 1080X uh, video card. That's like a uh, <laughs> and the SSDs in there. Did I talk about the SSDs? They're insane. I've got a RAID zero of the uh, of what is it, oh gosh, I don't even know, is the Samsung 950s in there? It's insane. So it's, it's blazing fast, okay? But I'm going to talk about just kind of the specifics, just a general kind of my process when I did, I'm not doing software development on that, or I'm doing some, maybe not, not, not very much though, you know. So what are kind of the things that you want to consider as a software developer, building a computer or buying a computer? So the first thing I think that I would say is that you want to think about whether or not you want a PC, like a standalone PC, or a laptop, right? Whether or not you're portable. And this is one of those things I've gone back and forth a lot with, with just my general setup in, in being a software developer, in being an entrepreneur, right? And I've gone back and forth. I used to build all my own PCs, and they used to also always be desktops. Then I tried laptops, and I was disappointed. Then I tried like Surface Books and, and stuff like that, or, or Surface Pros, and that didn't quite work out. So what I ended up settling on was a laptop that is as powerful as a desktop PC. Now, the reason why I did that, it, we, if, we go, if we go back, is because what I ended up, the problem I ended up having with most of the laptops was they were just not powerful enough, especially if I wanted to play some games, I couldn't run shit on them, and it was just, it was just really freaking annoying. And then I also found that 95% of the time, I had the laptop on my desk, right, at, at home, and I, I didn't really need to move it around, right? It, it's set up to 
my big monitor. I've got, you can check out the monitor. I did a review on it. It's a widescreen monitor. They got an ultra wide and and that's the comfortable place for me to be is at my my desk doing that. So why was I optimizing? Why was I trying to make a portable, you know, super light laptop when most of the time that wasn't the case? And I also found that I could just travel with a little Chromebook if I needed to just access the web and stuff because most of the time when I'm traveling, I'm not doing hardcore work, right? It, it, if I am, then I have to sort of question why am I traveling? And if I am travel, and if I am doing that, then I'm traveling for like three or four weeks and I've got some kind of place where I'm gonna set up a desk and it doesn't, it doesn't matter to the weight of the laptop so much anymore. But that's me, right? If you don't travel, travel at all, hmm, you might really question whether you need a laptop at all, okay, right? Or you could do something like I did where you get a beast of a laptop and you're willing to pay the extra money if you've got the money and that's, and then you can just, you know, lug that sucker around, right? If you travel all the time or you work in coffee shops and stuff, you're not going to want that, right? You're not going to want, you're, you're going to want a powerful, thin laptop that's, you know, and, and but what I have found is that even though I love to travel light, that you, you still want to get something powerful enough because that's going to be the, the hassle of carrying something around that's just a little bit more heavy versus the hassle of it not being powerful enough. Not being powerful enough is a much bigger hassle. Believe me, I've had all different sizes and weights of laptops and it, it's, it's worth a little bit of extra hassle to have a little bit of extra weight. Again, like I said, the one that I have that's a a 17 inch laptop and it and weighs a, a lot that that's different that's that's pretty damn heavy I, I will admit that plus with the power brick for that so that's the first consideration that, that you want to you want to make right if you don't travel you know, you know and, and even if you do if you travel a small amount maybe you have like a, a travel solution where you've got a smaller Chromebook or something just to access email and, and do some basic stuff uh, and, and you've got a desktop, right? And then, but if you travel a lot, then then you go the laptop route. I think that's the first decision you have to make. Now, as far as like the hardware itself, let's talk about a few things that, that I think are important. So. I find that I'm, I'm more productive when I have dual screen monitors. That's why I like the ultra wide monitor that I have. Again, I'll point to that review I did on that. And it's because it's basically a dual screen monitor. I basically split it in half, but it's got no split. Now with laptops, that's kind of difficult to do. There's some hacky solutions I've seen for that. But uh, if you can have a setup in, in you're primarily not traveling around, I'd recommend an ultra wide and then a laptop that can power that or a desktop that can power that. If you're thinking about, if you're traveling around and you're looking for the, the screen, right, the resolution, I found that 4K resolution on laptops, that's not really necessary because you're not going to be able to utilize that, not for development. You're not gonna be able to use all that real estate because it, it'll just be too small, even on a 17 inch laptop. So that's sort of a waste. So I think 1080, you know, P, basically 1080 resolution or above, you know, 1024 by 768 is probably a little bit too small, but if you've got full HD 1080, you know, that's, or a little bit bigger than that, that's probably your ideal resolution for a laptop where you can maximize the space. You wanna consider, and you wanna look at, if you turn it up to the highest resolution, what your area is, and how much of that can you use, and can you actually split the screen in half and have almost like a dual monitor setup. You know, if you've got enough resolution, and the screen's big enough, you can do that, but that's uh, that's something that I would highly consider. And I'm, I'm starting there because I think that is very influential on your productivity, right? Because there, there's a huge difference. And I've had a whole bunch of different monitors, right? I've had six monitors. I think I've had the most monitors I've ever had hooked up to a computer is probably eight. And I have found, and I've had two 4K displays, dual 4Ks set up. And I have found that really just the ultra wide seems to be the most productive. Just having the dual monitors is really that all that I need is, is having that. So that's, that's why I'm starting there. Now, next consideration, okay? The next consideration I would say for developers is not even processor, okay? It is it is the hard drive, the, the speed of the hard drive. And the reason why I say that is because the thing that's going to delay you the most and make you procrastinate and make you wanna pull your hair out is build time, right? You spend a lot of time compiling, especially if you're a Microsoft developer, compiling you know, in Visual Studio can has a, has a reputation for being fairly slow at times. So that is really, really important. Even, you know, whatever you're doing, if you're working on a big project, you're gonna be spending a lot of time building and compiling. And so 
the, the primary thing that's gonna determine how fast that goes, at least most of the time, the bottleneck, is going to be the, the drive. So you wanna make sure you get an SSD drive and the fastest SSD drive that you can. If you can get one of those, what are the M2 drives, I think that's what it's called. You know, I'm not as up on the hardware as I used to be. That is what I would highly recommend because those drives basically work on the PCI Express. Uh, so it's it's much faster. They're not limited by the the SATA interface, which, which sort of caps out. So if you can get one of those really fast drives, that is cool. That, the, the one that I have is the Samsung 950, I believe, or it might be 960. I'll have to, I'll have to check on that. We'll put some links there. Whatever the, the latest one is, it's pretty damn expensive, but that's, that's where I would put a bulk of my money. Uh, it'll also affect boot times and just, you know, when you're, when you're doing development, you're working with files a lot, moving them around, compiling them, you know, recreating them. There's a lot of disk writing. So that is gonna be really, really important in, in, in my opinion. The next place that I would look. Uh, processors, I'm not even worried about because most of the processors are going to be fast enough. I mean, we've, we've sort of hit this point where processing power is not usually a bottleneck, right? Having a good fast processor is probably good. I would, I would spring the extra money to get an i7 if you can, at least, you know, at the time of this video, I'm trying to make this as timeless as possible or whatever the, you know, whatever the kind of sweet spot is for, for getting the processor speed. Now, the next thing I would say is RAM. Okay, and there's a couple of reasons why I would go with pretty high RAM configurations. First of all, RAM is pretty damn cheap at this point, right? So you know, getting 32 gig of RAM is, is really not much more expensive than 16. If you can, you know, depending on, if you use an, if you get an ultra slim, an ultra book or something like that, it may limit you on that. So you might not be able to do it, but I would opt for 64 if you can, uh, especially as a developer. And I'll tell you why is because I spend a lot of time towards the, the end part. <laughs> Am I really going to call it the end part of my software development career? I guess so, because I'm not really doing software development anymore. Not really, right? Maybe I'll get back into it, but I'm never going to be a full-time software developer again. Let's just, let's just be honest here. But I spent a lot of time using virtual machines. And so one of the, the key things for virtual machines, if you want to have your, you know, you run a Windows machine and have Linux and you have a Hackintosh or, or whatever it is, or you have different virtual machines for different configurations, which is what I had a lot of times or for testing, or I would split the database and the uh, the code so I could simulate more like a real production environment. It's really cool to be able to have different virtual machines and to have a virtual machine for working on different projects, right? Or, or working on different branches of code. That Those things are really, really useful. And when you have enough RAM, you can start doing that stuff. So having 64 gig of RAM allows you to run quite a few virtual machines and not have much of a, of a problem. At 32, you'd probably be fine, but you know, I, I would opt for that. So that's, that's sort of where I think that's, those are the main main concerns that, that I would have as far as a laptop. You know, it, it's it's kind of nice to, to think that you're gonna get something super light and and, and airy. <laughs> uh, a MacBook Air is just, I don't know, in, in my opinion, it's just not powerful enough. You know, the new MacBook is just not powerful enough. Heck, even even some of the some of the more powerful MacBooks, I'm I'm finding we're not we're not powerful enough for what I want to do. I mean, I do a lot of video editing and stuff too, so that's you know that's you could take that into consideration. Um, if you want to play games, <laughs> you, you might want to have something that that can do that. And and it turns out that a lot of the gaming rigs are going to be really good for developers as well. That's a good place to look. As I was discovering, as I've been you know buying computers and building computers, I found that gaming rigs and developers sort of go together because they're they're really usually super high end where the average user that just browses the web doesn't need that kind of stuff so that's 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 my opinion on it. I think you know as far as vendors and stuff. I, well, I'll, I'll give you. I'll talk about gimmicks. Let's talk about gimmicks. I don't find touchscreen to be worth it at all. It's just uh, gimmick as as hell. I, I expect touchscreen to disappear on laptops. Maybe and maybe it's so un so cheap to do that. Maybe it'll stick around. But I never ever use it. I had a Surface Book for a while. I did some reviews on the Surface Book. 
and you can check that out. I kind of liked it, but it was so damn buggy that I had to give it back to Microsoft, to be honest with you. I, I, you know, I hate to say that, but it's such a great concept, but the, I never touched the touch screen. I mean, it just, I don't know, maybe some of you use that, but it's just easier to just use a mouse. I, it, does, it doesn't make sense. I mean, on an iPad or a phone, that's, that makes sense. Uh, the, the hinge screens and the folding, never use that, <laughs> never. And, and turn it into portrait mode, nope, sorry. I, I just never use that. The pen, I barely used. I mean, maybe you could train yourself to use the pen for a lot of stuff, but it's just too much of a hassle to, to whip out the stylus and, and draw and stuff like that, unless you're specifically drawing a lot for your for your job, which is a developer. So I would avoid all of that gimmick stuff, okay? A good keyboard, I think, is, is important, but you're gonna get used to whatever keyboard that you're gonna use. Um, I like to have a, a network card, like a, a hardwire in there instead of using Wi-Fi, but you don't have to have that in the laptop there's plenty of adapters that you can get so that work on USB 3 so I wouldn't worry about that as a consideration either I think that's about it right the, the big thing like I said is just make sure that think about the form factor first and if you can use the bigger form factors like desktop that's gonna get you more bang for your buck. If you can use the big form factor like a big laptop, that's gonna get you more power and it probably will be worth the trade-off as long as it's not too bulky. Going super small, bad idea. It just is a Chromebook and whatever. Don't do that. It's, don't, don't hamper yourself. It's just a pain to, to try and save, shave off a, a pound or so. Stupid, stupid. I, I, and I'm saying it because I made that mistake. Resolution, screen, you wanna consider that. I think that's gonna be critical for productivity if you can try to get as close to dual screen as possible and then finally the this the hard drive the speed the ssd absolutely if you can do an a, a one that is an m2 type architecture that goes directly into pci express slot or is it directly into memory that circumvents the sata basically I don't, I don't i'm not as up on the technical details some of you can correct me on that but basically you get what i'm saying that's going to be your biggest thing for your buck uh, as far as vendors, I'm not even going to recommend vendors, but you know that's just look for those things. Uh, the Origin PC, like I said, but that was who did my PC, and they let me build a custom PC. I like that. That was that was pretty cool. I've used iBuy Power before for a desktop, and they they did a really good system as well. I think Origin does it. So there's there's a few of those out there. But uh, but yeah, that's it. That's what I got. All right. I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, if, if it is, you know, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Let me know. Let me know what your suggestions are. If you've got some ideas, if you think there's something that I missed here. But, uh, but yeah, there you go. All right. If you like this video, if you want to uh, get more of these, click that subscribe button below. I'll talk to you next time. Oh, and hey, if you like this shirt that I'm wearing, if you want one, click on me. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.